donation. We call it a cup of coffee donation because I love coffee and who doesn't love a $5 donation? And uh, Or you can go on Patreon and support us there as well. Uh, if you really, really want to help us out, you can sponsor the podcast. Um, let me know. We can get your advertisement up here on the show for people here. Uh, today I want to talk to you about, uh, it's, it's a little bit of temptation and a little bit of excuses. Um, I actually was, I did, I recorded these two ideas as separate podcasts, but I think it's better if we talk about them together uh, because they're really closely tied to each other. I think as Christians, a lot of times, especially as American Christians, millennial Christians, we really misunderstand what's going on when we talk about temptation, right? There's a whole lot of people that'll say stuff like, oh, the devil made me do it, or um, I want to, but the devil won't let me, or stuff like that. Um... And uh, they just blame the devil, and then they get to just move on with their lives because if the devil made me do it, then it wasn't me doing it, and I don't have to be accountable for it because it wasn't me doing it, it was the devil making me do it. Um, And there's a little bit of credibility to that. Um, In the book of Romans, Paul talks about the idea of the good I want to do, I do not do, the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing, and therefore it must not be I who do it, but sin living in me. And that's valid. Of course it's valid. It's scripture. But what Paul's talking about is when every desire of my heart is to do good, when I desperately want to serve my Savior and do good works, and I just keep slipping up anyway. That's what Paul's talking about. He's not talking about uh, my pet sins. He's not talking about you know decisions to do bad things or whatever it might be. He's talking about um, the frustration of desperately trying to do what is right and good and being uh be righteous before the eyes of God and miserably failing to do so. Um, And he's not using it as an excuse either. He's saying I need to recognize that there is something in me that I cannot control no matter how hard I try. I certainly try, but I cannot control it. It's not going to go away before I die. And so I need to understand that um, A, because I can never be good enough, I will always need a savior. So it's not like I'm earning my own salvation or something here. And B, um, because I am corrupted to the core, there is no getting out of this alive. Right? There is no um, me you know, figuring it out and now I'm not sin- a sinner anymore. Uh, there is no like uh, arrival moment where I no longer struggle with sin because of my nature as a sinful human being. I think... Well, so we like to use the devil as an excuse. Um, I think we also give the devil way too much power. There's no, he doesn't have as much power as we like to think he does. Um, the devil is not omniscient. He is not omnipotent. Um, he is not always there. He does not know everything. He doesn't even know what it's like to be a human. He's never been tempted. He's never, uh, you know, ha- sinned sexually. He's never eaten too much food. He's never been a glutton. He's never been, you know, any of those things. He's never been that because he's not human and so what he does is he watches what we do and he sees patterns in human behavior and he based on those patterns he tempts us to do things um, that will pull us away from our heavenly father and eventually put our faith in danger and hopefully on his end he's hoping that uh, it will eventually kill our faith Um, but like i said the devil's not omnipotent and not omniscient and he's not he just isn't always there and so a lot of times when we're chalking it up to the devil made me do it, the truth is I is that I haven't been taking care of my heart, soul, and body. And because of that, I am extremely susceptible to the sins of the flesh. I am extremely susceptible to um, sins of cowardice, such as jealousy or uh, slander or hatred, those types of things that happen when you're tired and just fed up with stuff, right? Um, and because I haven't been taking care of myself spiritually, those sins are a lot easier for me to succumb to. Um, and that is accountability piece for me where I need to say, look, I can do better. By the grace of God, I can do better. And if I blame the devil, it leaves me off the hook. There's nothing I can do about it. If I say, I've been sinning. I haven't been living the way I ought to. I've been drifting away from my Heavenly Father. Then that puts me back in the driver's seat, something I can control. I can go spend extra time in the Word of God. I can go spend extra time um, in prayer. I can go get right with my Heavenly Father. I can go into my prayer closet all the time and talk to Jesus when I'm tempted. 
I can do all those things and I can change the way I'm living because I am a child of God and I am accountable before him in eternity and I can control my words and actions just like Paul says when he talks to young men. Now, this is not just a message about the spiritual life either. It's also just a practical message about things you want to get done in your life. There's a lot of people that make excuses about all that stuff too. I think the most recent one that I saw that really got me um, was it was a picture. So this is, isn't a perfect example for dudes, I guess, but uh, it was a picture of a young woman, uh, somebody that I know fairly well, who I've known since for quite a while. Um, and uh, she's got three kids now. The youngest one's about two years old. And she posted a picture of herself, and she's significantly overweight at this point. Like, And I'm not being mean. I'm not trying to... I mean, I, I think I'm being really careful to hide her identity for you. I, I don't, I'm not trying to shame her or any women that have had children. I, I get it. Children do change your body. Uh, but she posted a picture of herself, probably, I would guess, like 60 plus pounds overweight. And the caption was, I love my children, but I don't hate, I, but sometimes I hate what they did to my body. And then she went on with a bunch of other things too. Like, I love my heart and I don't like how my other organs function, um, you know, and so on and so forth. And she just went right down the list. And uh, at the bottom, she said something about, like, hey, this is me being vulnerable. I thought, that's not you being vulnerable. You just made a list of excuses as to why your life doesn't look the way you want it to. And I'm not a motivational speaker who's going to go tell you to go make your life look like the way you want it to. I'm not saying that at all. Um, what I am saying is, um, I don't... I genuinely wish her success, and I want her to be healthy and happy. She's a fantastic woman. Um, but with the current mindset she has, where she just put the blame on every, all of her surroundings and hasn't taken accountability for the condition of her body or the condition of her heart, um, I don't. She's probably not going to experience very much success because she's going to keep saying, "Oh, oh no, I've had babies. I just can't lose weight." It's probably a lot harder. I get it. Like it, it's a lot harder. It's not easy, but it's not the kids anymore. It's not the baby anymore that's making you this way. Your body has changed, um, but it's been two, three years since you had a kid. If you're still 50, 60 pounds overweight, it's not the child that's making you that way. It's your decisions that are making you that way. Again, no shame. I'm not pointing fingers and trying to make somebody feel bad. I'm just pointing out the reality, the objective truth that um, not everybody, that doesn't happen to everybody. And it's not like some people, some people do bounce back or easier than others. But uh, at some point you have to take accountability and say, my decisions have put me in this position and my decisions are what's going to get me out of this position. Um, for men, a lot of times it's relationships, it's work, um, it's uh, career choices, all that kind of stuff, involvement in church make excuses and talk about how we don't have you know don't have the time well you make time for the things that are important right or I'll say you know um, my wife won't let me or uh, my kids are angry at me and I just dismiss like that's that's an excuse I don't have to deal with it then because the situation is not ideal or you can turn around and say wow my relationship with my kids isn't what I want it to be I'm gonna go work on that Wow I would really love to be independent in my work. I don't want to have to work for the man anymore, um, but I don't have the business acumen at the moment to make that happen. So maybe I go read some books on business. Maybe I connect with a guy who's successfully started a bunch of small businesses and get him to help me start my own. Um,
Gentlemen, that's the end of the video. That's all we got for you this time. So on behalf of all those involved in creating, editing, producing, and publishing this content, thank you for being a part of the Gird Up family. If you're not listening to the Gird Up podcast yet on whatever platform is your favorite podcast platform, you need to go subscribe right now and start listening today. There you will find over 300 episodes of interviews, man talk, and all kinds of other things all geared at helping you become a man after God's own heart. It's a great resource. Go use it wisely. We also ask that you would consider supporting Gird Up Ministries by shopping at the store at girdupministries.com, buying a shirt like this one or stickers for the back of your car, your water bottles, whatever. You can support us on Patreon by donating. Just look up Gird Up Ministries there on Patreon. Or you can go to girdupministries.com and buy us a cup of coffee. That's just a one-time $5 donation. Anything you donate goes right back into making content like this for men like you. Make sure you're following us on social media, particularly Facebook and Instagram. Like all of our posts, share them, get the word out to the world that we can and are ready to be men after God's own heart. With all that being said, gentlemen, I love you. I deeply care about you. I hope that this has been a blessing on your journey towards Christian manhood. Now go, gird up, and be the man that God created you to be. We'll see you next time.